him to lead us in this life and to receive what he has for us in every situation. And as I was uh, praying this morning, actually it might have been last night, Last, last night or this morning, the Lord was really uh, sharing with me that he wanted to uh, go a different way this morning and to talk about God's plan for your emotions. You know, we've been talking about faith, about getting God's word in your mouth, and all this stuff. And that is wonderful because it's faith building. It is the word. But how many of you have ever noticed that when you go home, Sometimes things happen that get you riled up. Anybody here ever been riled up besides me? I'm talking, you know the word. You've been listening to Charles Capps for 20 years. You know how to speak the word of faith. You know how to do the word. And all of a sudden, something hits you. Things are not going right. And... Who is this person? Mouthing off? No, never. Faith filled, spirit filled, God loving people? We have emotions. And God has given us a plan to be able to keep those emotions in check. Now, I want to uh, share with you a quick story before I even start on the scripture. One of the reasons God began to lead me to preach on that level of emotions and how God will deal with our emotions is because as a minister traveling over the years, I've run into a lot of different things, you know, had a lot of different challenges. But, you know, we all have our likes and dislikes. And when you travel, how many of you have a certain thing you got to go find? Whether it's coffee in the morning or a certain drink or a certain type of food you want to go somewhere you're familiar with, whatever. Well, my deal was having a big Diet Coke. All right? And I traveled overseas. I was preaching. I believe it was St. Thomas. Some things kind of run together now, but in the Caribbean. And, you know, there wasn't really any place to get a big cup. I mean, I like to drink a lot, number one, and I'll drink water. I'll dump it out and put ice in it and get water, and then, you know, I'll have that cup. I want my big cup. And I'd been preaching on a Sunday morning, and uh, things went good, and I had, on the way to the church, when the pastor came and got me, I saw a Burger King downtown. And as we drive by, I'm like, I can get my drink there. When I get back and I realize it's about a mile and a half, maybe two miles, but I can walk because I didn't have a car. So I'm preaching, and I mean, the Spirit of God is moving, but it was hot in there. There was no air conditioning. People are wall to wall in the pews, and it is completely full. And the Spirit of God moves, and great things happen. And I get back to the hotel, put on some casual clothes and my tennis shoes, and I am booking it to Burger King. To get my drink, that's all I cared about. And I got there, and I go up and I said, I want your largest, the biggest one you have. I want to clarify that. Coke. She looked at me and she said, oh, I'm sorry, my machine just broke down. It was hot. I walked a mile and a half. I've been standing on my feet all day long. And do you know what I did? Being the godly, understanding, peace-loving person that I am, I said, you have got to be kidding me. And I stomped my foot, and I turned around in circles, and I'm like, are you serious? Are you serious? And she said, yes. And I said, I just really need a cup with ice and a straw. I just really, you know, I'm, I'm just, you know, having my little baby fit. And uh, she said, hold on just a minute. She went in the back. She got a giant cup. 
with a straw and she went next door and bought a coke and poured in it and brought it to me and she handed it to me and she said there you go and she smiled really big and I said thank you so much that was so nice of you and she said well your preaching was really good this morning all know we have times like that when we act like that but the last thing you want is the congregation you just preach to seeing you do that our emotions are there there are feelings you know if we have strong love for God if we have strong love for our husband our wife our children it is strength of emotion and it goes both ways. Anybody here ever been so mad at your spouse or your kids? So angry with their behavior. Emotions cover the gamut. They go both ways. But we have to learn to control by the Spirit of God those emotions so that we don't just feel all of that God spirit and that encouragement when we're at the church but when we're on our own and somebody looks at you and say I'm sorry it just went out three seconds before you walked in you don't have that explosion of what am I gonna do what am I gonna do now if I had any common sense I would have stopped and said it's really not that big of a deal I bet if you walk down somewhere, you can find a Coke machine. You can find something. And somewhere you will find a cup. If worse, worse, walk to a grocery store. You know, do something. But sometimes that moment when we have been looking forward to and it's changed, we have to deal with our emotions. So I want you to go with me to Philippians chapter 4. While you're turning there, I'm going to read you a scripture. So listen to this. And we talked about it yesterday. uh, Hebrews 11, um, verse 3 is what I want to read you. I want you to listen to this. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So the things which are seen, the things which I want you to understand, the things which we see on this earth were not made... By things which do appear. Let's put that in ways we can totally understand it. The words were framed out of nothing. But faith through the word. God's word. Light be and light was. As we speak God's word. We may be looking at circumstances that can can totally say to us in every realm this is not working out it's not working out but God makes things out of things that do not appear so why are we hung up on things that appear because things appear all the time things appear that are not consistent with what God has already spoke to our heart, what we're believing. And here this big mountain appears. And God says that those mountains can be removed. Right? But when your emotions start going downhill, do you, have you ever noticed things go from bad to worse? Pretty soon, when you're that upset and aggravated because something didn't work out that you really were intended to do, something comes across, before you know it, you've pulled five other people into being aggravated. You go say, I just can't even believe this. This is just wrong. Well, I know that happened to me the other day, and now I'm so upset and blah, 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 blah. What does Philippians chapter 4 say? Let's go there. We're going to start with verse 6. Be careful for nothing. 
But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things of a good, are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. We have to come back to the reality of what we know as Christians. How many times has God turned a bad situation around for your good? How many times has a giant thing that could destroy you come along and God has turned it around and the ship is going the other way. You are going right back where, it, where you started. Back in the word of God, back doing exactly what God led you to do. But there were circumstances that came up that said you will never do that again. You will never walk in that again. You are going to fail. We get God's word in our heart and our mouth. Well, when you have emotions coming against you and you fall into that trap of letting your emotions take over, because when they do, you can say some really ridiculous stuff. You can say some stuff that's not true. You don't feel that way. But when anger or frustration or these things come against you and you start allowing yourself to go there, you can make yourself look pretty silly. And you can hurt a lot of people in, in, the, in the process. So how do we as Christians bring those emotions into line? It's very simple. Whatsoever things are pure, Gentle, honest, full of virtue. Think on those things. When you feel those emotions coming in that point where you're ready to go, this is not right. And you start that process. The Spirit of God on the inside of you can begin to speak to you. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And pull you back into your faith by what you say. It's, I'm going to trust Jesus to meet my needs. I'm going to trust Jesus to work in my behalf. Now, peace comes from God. How many of you know that? Comes from the throne room of God. And peace is always available. I don't care what you're going through. Peace is always available. There was a time when I was preaching in um, Eureka Springs, Arkansas. And Eureka Springs has these giant hills and like this and curves and trees and cliffs. And it snowed. And it iced. And it snowed. And we really, really needed to get back. And people were go driving on the roads and I had a little bit of a check in my spirit that maybe it wasn't the right time to go and went ahead and loaded up the kids and started driving back to Tulsa and as we came over now my son who's 12 he's in the back of an, a Chevy Astro van this is in the early 90s he's in the back of a Chevy Astro, Astro van the little kids were in their seats strapped in and as we come over this hill it goes straight down, and it was solid ice, and not only was there a pile of cars that had crashed at the bottom, there was a car who had gone to the side and was hanging off a cliff by a tree with people in it. Okay, this is a long hill. Chevy Astro vans don't do well on snow anyway. 
we go over that hill and, you know, there's no time to think and calm yourself down. I've got all my children in this vehicle. There doesn't look like there is any way out. And the only thing that came out of my mouth was tongues. I am praying in tongues. And as we come over, that Astro van turns sideways and is headed for that other pile of cars. And at that very moment, while I'm praying in tongues, kids are praying in tongues, except for my 11-year-old son. He's back there screaming, God, forgive me. God, forgive me. I'm sorry for everything I've done. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. You know, and I'm praying in tongues, believing God that we're going to live through this, but he's back there repenting. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you what. When you get to looking death in the face, it'll, it'll tell you where you are. We laugh about that till this day. I don't know what he had done, but he had done something because he knew the word well enough to know if I'm going to die, I am going to make sure I'm right with God at this point. <laughs> Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. How many of you know 90% of what you get emotional and upset about doesn't have anything to do with dying? It's little stuff. It's the way we relate to each other. It's the way we speak to the way each other. Each one of us have needs. We have needs from our friends, you know, that they feel. We have needs from our parents that they feel. We have relationships that are built on things. And sometimes we just need what we need. And when we don't get it, let's just talk through the process. What happens? It starts in here. Well, you never spend any time with me anymore. I want to do this. We always do what you want to do. And now, and this is all in your head. And it's going through it and going through it. And it gets bigger and it gets bigger. And then one day, maybe the same day, who knows, out of the clear blue, it all comes out. And that other person is standing there looking at you like, they didn't think all those things. They didn't know that was in your head. And it seems unreasonable. Have you ever noticed that emotions, if you let them run off with you, you seem very unreasonable? Now, that was all very reasonable to you because you talked yourself into that state. Yeah. Oh, which story? Oh, yeah, I should tell you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I've done that a couple times that I didn't finish the story. The end of the story is we're going down sideways. Just as we got to the bottom, it just turned enough that we missed every single car and went right on our way. We didn't even stop. You know, it was like I was afraid to try to stop or we would have stopped to see, but there were already emergency vehicles coming. You know, but when you are looking at that, it, it's amazing. And it, you know, everybody in the van was just like, God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. Because you come up over a hill, you don't expect to see that. And you're going down. There's no way to stop. And you see already the destruction. And God just caused that van to just straighten up enough to go right around. Never touched a thing. Never went off the side of the road. God is good. Amen? If we panic when things are not going our way, we cause more panic. If we allow our mind to begin to think on everything that's wrong, why, who, who, who in the world who knows the word of God and the power of the word of God would ever do that. <laughs> We're human. The truth is, God loves you. He wants you to be happy. 
God loves your spouse, loves your children, loves your boss, loves the people you work with, loves the people that you're connected to at church. And yet people get upset with one another. People get aggravated at one another for a thing or another. And if they allow that, that can become a huge thing in their life. It can destroy things. But when you get your mind on whatsoever things are true and honest and just, and you can do it like that, when you get in a situation that emotions are running high, but let me just tell you this, next time somebody in your family is upset, don't look at them and say, think about whatever is true and just because they might jump you. Nobody wants to hear that from anybody else when they're upset. We need to control our own self. Amen? And allow God. There's been so many things that I had it all worked out in my head. I was upset about and I was going to get it fixed. And I was going to talk to somebody. And I was going to do something. And didn't do it for a long time. Thought about it for a long time. And out of the clear blue, that thing just changed without me ever doing anything. Now, isn't that better? way better okay let's go to this you cannot make other people do what you want so quit wasting your time trying to fix everyone else the only person that you are in control of is you it is for some reason human nature to want to do that but this is what we can do. We can learn to find happiness and peace in any situation. It is a conscious decision to control your own feelings. Recognize those feelings. And to bring them under control and say, okay, Lord, when I'm not upset, I am going to talk to you and have you show me what you really want me to do about this situation. I don't know about you, but, you know, the younger I was, I'm getting, I, I'm growing as I get older. We get more mature. But when I was young, you know, my, that was my deal. I'm going to change. Hey, that, that's horrible. I'm going to make sure you get changed here. Am I the only one that's ever done that? Anybody else that ever done that? Let me tell you what our kids want. What I wanted as a kid. What we all need. Acceptance and love. Now, I'm not saying they don't need discipline. I'm not even talking about discipline right now. I'm talking about what we want. We are different from each other. All of us are different. How many of you know two kids in the same family can be completely different? We are different. God created us as individuals. And he never gave us the job of making somebody else like us or making somebody else to meet our every need by reading our mind. But he did make us to be able to communicate in love. And he did make us be able to accept other people the way he accepted us when we were not lovable. When we were full of sin. When we were walking away from God. The two greatest commandments. Love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. And what's the second one? We love ourselves so much that we're continually trying to make sure that everybody else does what we want them to do because it makes us happy. Sometimes it's because we think it'll make them happier. The two greatest commandments. If I love God with all my heart and all my soul and all my mind and I love you as much as I love me, then I'm going to 
understand when you're immature. When your Christianity is not at the level that it needs to be. We all grow at different levels. I'm not going to jump on your case and say, you better watch the words of your mouth because you just said that and, you know, this is going to happen to you. And blah, 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 blah. You know what? That's not love. That's not love. Do I ever say anything to anybody when the Spirit of God tells me? But it's in love. It's not out of anger. It's not out of frustration because it is somewhat frustrating when you see someone causing their own problems. But unfortunately, it's really easy for us to see that in other people and then we don't notice it when we do it. You know, God's word is powerful. Sharper than a two-edged sword dividing between this what? Soul and spirit of man. You are not just spirit. You are soul and spirit. And God's is capable and is willing right now to help you keep those emotions in check. To help you be able to be in a place where you always have peace. As he is of performing his word when you stand in faith. Amen? Okay, we're going to finish up pretty quick, but I'm going to go to this uh, last one. It's absolutely imperative that you get control of your thoughts. You're going to be thinking when your emotions are high. But the way which that path can lead can lead you in the wrong way. But when emotions are high, if the first thing you do when you notice yourself getting to that point, whether it's fear anger, frustration is bring that back under control of Christ. Turn with me, if you would, to Proverbs 15. I'm getting there. I'm being really slow right now. <laughs> I get there. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. Anybody here ever said something they didn't mean? In anger? Anybody here ever been frustrated by something at work or something totally unrelated to your family and your family said something to you and you just kind of blew up? Had nothing to do with them? Had nothing to do with anything they said to you? And you're just like, what's wrong with you? God really showed me as a mom my my kids had been going to Willie George's church, you know, and they had the Willie George videos of Gospel Bill, and they had the little guns and stuff, you know, and that's probably the only guns my kids had been exposed to besides hunting. And uh, Caleb was in the bathtub, and he was probably three. I, I'm just guessing because I can't remember exactly. Three to four. He was pretty small, very small, you know. I mean, he could talk, but he didn't talk a lot at that age. And I, I had you know, all these kids to get bass, and I was down to Caleb, and he was in the bathtub playing, and I'm like, okay, it's time to get out. No, I want to play, you know, and finally I said, Caleb, it's time to get out, and he's like, okay, so I pick him up, and I set him on the bath mat, and I said, put your hands up, and he goes, don't shoot me, mama, don't shoot me, <laughs> and I'm telling you what, that was so grievous to me, he took that phrase, you know, from just what he had seen, you know, when you say put your hands up, they say, you know, it's because they got a gun on you. But his instant reaction because of my tone of voice. And I was, I started crying. I was like, how sad is that? 
that your frustration of just trying to get the kids to bed, when you said put your hands up so you could dry them up, he said, don't shoot me, Mama. It really made me look at myself as a mom. And my kids love me. They didn't tell me I was a bad mom. I don't think I was a bad mom. But at that moment, what I was portraying was not the love of God in my voice. It's not always what we say, but it's how we say it. Not just the words, but the inflection of frustration in your voice can hurt. And we can go further than that. It can be eye-rolling. You didn't say a word. How we portray ourselves to others and how we answer others. Love does not realize. Boy, y'all are awful quiet. <laughs> You know, it's real easy when we preach about faith, but when it affects the things we're not as good at, it's a little bit frustrating to know that we all know that about each other because it's not just us. We all have to control our emotions. Amen? Okay, I'm going to finish this up with it, the expression of what you convey is, in, is completely important. And then I'm going to say, forgive yourself for your past mistakes. When you make a mistake, forgive yourself. And more importantly, ask other people to forgive you when you wrong them. I can't tell you how many times that something has happened and I was debating back and forth between either me and my kids or you know, me and somebody else where it got a little heated and you don't want to say you're sorry. You may not be able to say you're sorry for what you believe, because you, what you believe and what you're saying may be accurate. But you can always have love for another person's opinion. Love for that person and their right to have an opinion. Do you know that's the most wonderful thing that God did, you know, after he gave us salvation? And when he actually, when he made man, he gave us all the right to choose our own path, even if it's the wrong one. I, I've had people come to me and it's like, well, God has to save them. They have to stop that. I said, nobody has to do anything because God gave us free will. And it is not your place to make people. However, it is our place to share the love of God because it's a good thing. It is our place to pray and say, Lord, open his eyes that he may see the truth and choose the truth. But battering someone, standing there and just trying to force them to believe the way you believe, live what you live, do what you do, is that how you got it? We allow God to move by his spirit. Amen? And there are many times we need to speak. Y'all are going to go out and, and, and do evangelism on the street. That's a great thing. But I'm telling you what, you do that in your family and it's not going to be good. You live what you believe. Amen? And you pray. Praise God. Bow your head, please. Father God, we love you and we thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you that you have an answer to every problem we face. We thank you that it is possible to walk in peace even when our emotions are involved and we feel overwhelmed 
that your spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, lives on the inside of us and can bring wisdom to our heart immediately that says, think on whatsoever things are pure and gentle, peaceful of good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, I will bring my mind into line with that and allow the Spirit of God to resolve situations. Instead of being in a state of confusion and every evil work. Father, we thank you that your word is powerful not only toward the world, but in our inner man to bring us peace in every situation. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I want to ask you this morning, is there anyone here? You have never accepted Christ as your Savior and you say today, I want to accept Jesus as my Lord. I want him to be the Savior of my life. All you have to do is believe that he is the Son of God and confess him as your Lord. And the old passes away and you become new. Is there anyone who says, I want to do that today? Okay, I'm going to ask you this, and I want you to keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed. If you're here today and you say, I've had a struggle with my emotions, there are times when it is very difficult for me to be the person that I am when I'm in the Spirit of God because I allow myself to be pulled off, and I want you to agree with me today that God will begin to help me control my emotions. If that's you, just raise your hand, put it right back down. I see the hand, I see the hand, I see those hands. Let's go before him now. Father God, we thank you. Lord, you know this is not what I wanted to preach today, but you told me somebody needed it, and I see that they do, and I know that you are faithful to your word. And today, we stand upon your word not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. You are set free from a pattern that has been in your life, and you will begin to have peace from the spirit of the living God in your emotions. And you'll be reminded by the spirit of God how to do that. And Father, we thank you for it. We praise you for it. Because you love us so much, you want us to be free from oppression. Say this with me. I am free from oppression. I am free from confusion. I have peace in my heart. I have the word of God in my heart. And I cannot fail. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, praise the Lord. I'm glad you...